Hello YouTube, how's everyone doing? It's Professional here. So as I promised, I told you guys that I would do a reaction to the uh, Modern Warfare, the multiplayer reveal that was going to be revealed today. Uh, I saw the one hour event that they had where they showed off the weapons, the customization, the perks, as well as the maps. And now I'm going to do a reaction to the um, trailer. I'm going to let you guys know what I think of the game, what has changed since other Call of Duty games, what's different, um, what's the same, um, what I like, what I don't like. I largely like it. I do like this game largely. There's two things I kind of don't like. One thing I'm a little concerned about. I'll talk about that a little later. But um, I like it. Um, I like it mostly. So um, here... We're going to be talking about this, so let's watch this trailer here, and um, I didn't know if I should do their whole reaction to the, like, the one hour uh, reveal, because that would have been like a one hour video, and going through all of that information, I thought it, that it would be more simple if I made a reaction to the multiplayer trailer, and I kind of just did like a summary and just summed up like the most important parts of the game and what I think of it. So let's watch this reaction trailer, and then I'll let, let's watch this trailer, and then I'll let you guys know what I think about it. So let's, let's get started here. That is a new feature when uh, you spawn in the maps, you spawn in like an animation of a vehicle. And they have door breaching now. I, I do like that a lot. Going dark. Wonder how many maps you can cut the power on. That drone is a kill streak, I believe. Night Vision is going to play a much larger part in this game. I don't know if those tanks are going to be uh, drivable. Yeah, I like this. M much larger open maps. I like that. Looks like there is some kind of shield. There is the juggernaut. That is the highest kill streak. And there, that is probably the biggest change, is the um, vehicle, the tank. I love it though, I, I like it that there's a tank. Javelin. <laughs> was using that last night on Call of Duty 4 when I was doing the campaign. There's the nuke at the end. Okay, so um, uh, let me. I'm gonna tell you guys what I think of this game. Um, I saw the one-hour breakdown before, so I saw uh, the gameplay of it, and um, uh, the biggest change that is in this game that you will uh, see in comparison to other Call of Duty games is probably the vehicles. The vehicles are the biggest change here. There's that light tank that you saw where it's controlled by two people you have a driver and you have a gunner that is a kill streak i believe that that is seven kills correct me if i'm wrong and that tank only spawns on larger maps so if you have larger maps you will spawn that tank if it's a smaller map you'll actually sm spawn like that remote controlled little drone tank that's the one that you will use so the vehicle is probably the biggest change that i've seen um in a lot of the maps there is like a little vehicle animation where you see like the soldiers get off a tank or off a truck or out of a helicopter but that just kind of just like a starter animation i don't think that those vehicles really play a role it's that light tank that's really going to make a difference and it's going to really change the map around and you know players are going to have to like figure out ways to destroy that tank um i'm sure it's not going to be 
overpowered and broken. It is a seven kill streak after all. But um, a lot of people I saw in the comments, they were like on the stream, like a lot of people in the comments, they were just getting upset. Like people in the comments were saying, oh, Call of Duty is dead now. This isn't Call of Duty anymore and stuff like that. Well, look, what I got to say to that is, and this is my opinion, feel free to disagree with me, but what I gotta say to that is these people have n largely not played the older Call of Duty games. If they went back, like, to Call of Duty 3, Call of Duty 3 had so many vehicles. It had so many vehicles. There were so many vehicles in Call of Duty 3. There was, like, Jeeps, there was different kinds of tanks. The maps were just huge, and it was very vehicle-based combat in the multiplayer. That was in Call of Duty 3. So, like, when people say that, like, oh, we've never had vehicles in Call of Duty that's untrue, that's false, it's just that these people have not played the older Call of Duty games. And you know, what I'm saying about this also is that they don't like the change, a lot of people don't like the change because we have big open maps now, pretty big maps, and these maps, they, uh, uh, they put all the other Call, a lot of the older Call of Duty maps to shame. Um, if you compare them, like, to Modern Warfare 2, they're very similar to Modern Warfare 2 maps, the way I saw, like, they're very big, very open maps, uh, much larger maps, like we had in Modern Warfare 2. Some of the maps we had in Modern Warfare 2 were pretty large maps, and I like those maps in Modern Warfare 2. I personally cannot stand the close quarter combat, I just don't like that, where it's just so, you barely have any, uh, anywhere to move around, it's room to room, constantly room to room. I don't like that type of gameplay, I like it where the, it's, it's more of a realistic map, like, maybe, like, a city environment, like they had in that trailer, um, kind of, like, streets where you can look all the way down the streets, and it's going to encourage actual sniping this time, not people running around quick scoping, which I didn't really see uh, quick scoping in that gameplay, thankfully. I'm not a fan of quick scoping, but it's going to actually encourage people to snipe, because when I played like some of the later Call of Duty games like Modern Warfare 3, Modern Warfare 3, a lot of the maps were just so close quartered, you couldn't really snipe on that map, and the developers were actually encouraging you to quick scope, which I just didn't like. So the maps are a lot more um, uh, open, there, um, you have those vehicles, which are a big change, um, you have the door breaching, the door breaching, uh, that, that I mentioned in the trailer before, but doors, you can now open doors, the thing is, though, is that the reporters, when they were asking the developers of the game, they didn't really go too much into detail on that, they said that you can open the door, they said you could, like, throw a flashbang in, that you could charge open, you could charge into the door, so you could just kick the door open, or just rush in, you don't have to, like, slowly open it, but, on the other hand, is they didn't really ask how many doors are openable in this game, like, how many buildings can you go into because you know if I was a reporter I would have asked that question you know how many buildings can you go into in this game because I really hope that a lot of the buildings in the game you can go into probably not all the buildings but I hope that a lot of the buildings and I like that that we can actually open doors this time and we can close doors that is something um very different um also, the controversial thing with the multiplayer is the return of kill streaks. So they're bringing back kill streaks. I couldn't really see any confirmation on whether kill streaks will be stacking on each other. What I mean by stacking is if you get like a kill streak and then your kill streak gets a bunch of kills, can you use that towards another kill streak? I don't know the answer to that question. If anybody knows, put that down below in the comments. But um, kill streaks are pretty controversial and people are pretty divided on it. Like I've seen like comments where people say, um, uh, people say, oh I like, I love it. Other people say I hate that there's um, kill streaks in this game. Game. Other people say that they just want score streaks. Now, um, my personal opinion on this, I think that there should be kill streaks, but I also think that there should be score streaks. So I think that there should be both. And the reason I say that is because I'm a very big team player. I'm a very big objective-based player. I like to play objective. And when I'm going to be playing objective, I'm going to be dying a lot more than if I, for example, like sat in some building at the edge of the map and just constantly sat there and just killed everybody, I'll be able to build my kill streak. And that's what I didn't like about kill streaks is people would just sit in the back of the map. They would not play objective. They wouldn't if, if it's for domination for instance, they wouldn't go up. They wouldn't capture the flags. They would just sit there and they would just try to they would just try to get their kills. That's what they would they would do. They wouldn't uh they wouldn't go for objective. So I don't really think it's fair to the objective base player that you're not going to have something to give them. Because if I go around, I start capturing flags, I defend a bunch of flags, you know, I should get rewarded for that. I should get something for that too. I'm gonna die much more than the person that's sitting at the back of the map, but I'm playing objective, so I personally feel that that's um uh I personally feel that score streak should be in the game. That's my opinion. Feel free to disagree with me, but that's just how I feel because if I see the, these kill streaks, people are not going to play objective. They're just all going to go for kills and just try to raise their KD. And that was one of the things I, I said I didn't like. Um, second thing I didn't like is I don't like the return of the nuke. They only showed that like at the end of the trailer here. Um, let me show it right here. Um, let me slow this down here. But they showed the nuke here. Yes. There is the nuke, and it doesn't really show what happens. Obviously, everybody's going to die when the nuke goes off, but it depends. If, if this nuke, if everybody just dies, I guess I'm fine with that, but if it ends the match, I'm against that, because 
in Modern Warfare 2, what I didn't like, and this is from 10 years ago, I played that game, I played that game, what, when I was around 15? Played that game 15, 16, when I played that game, so this is over 10 years ago, but what I didn't like about Modern Warfare 2 is the nukes, and I didn't like that somebody could just sit at the back of the map, they could just use a grenade launcher, they could just keep firing towards the enemy spawn, get a bunch of kills, they would stack up on top of each other, and then call in a nuke. I've had matches where within the first five minutes, somebody calls in a nuke and just ends the match, so I've had that happen to me before, I just don't like that, the nuke just comes out of nowhere and just ends the match, just me personally, how I feel about it. Um, the other thing that has me a little bit concerned, now this, those were the two things I didn't like. The third thing has me a little bit concerned. Now this is a, uh, first thing, let me say, a good thing is, all the DLC in this game is going to be free. There's no season pass, so everything is going to be free, all free content. However, there is a catch, because there is nothing really there's nothing really free if you think about it because they want to make money from this game continuously they're not gonna they're not just gonna put out free content and just expect not to get any money back they're gonna want to make their money with microtransactions and the journalists the people that were covering the event they did a really bad job at this because i would have asked them right away i would have asked them how do microtransactions work in this game they didn't really ask that any questions so the journalists did a pretty bad job at covering that but that's what has me really concerned about this game because yes we get free content that's nice that's great awesome no season and pass. But on the other hand, what are the microtransactions going to be like? I'm personally not against microtransactions as long as they're fair and balanced and they're just cosmetic things, not things that affect gameplay or give you an advantage over other players. But you guys saw how bad the loot boxes. The loot boxes could be pretty bad in other Call of Duty games. You saw, I didn't play Black Ops 4, but I had so many people tell me about the loot boxes in Black Ops 4. I played Call of Duty 4 Remastered a lot. The loot boxes in that game are just such a grind. It's such a grind to unlock some of the DLC guns in that game. So, I'm just nervous that the uh, that the uh, microtransactions could possibly destroy the game because the game's looking bright. A lot of people are excited for it. Microtransactions are the only thing that could really hurt this game, in my opinion, at this point. Um, some of the other things I wanted to talk about perks in this game. Perks pretty similar to like Modern Warfare 2. I didn't really see anything uh, anything really different with the perks. That was just me when I saw the gameplay. There's all kinds of perks there. I didn't really see anything different. I like the way the perks are. Oh, and I, I, I don't think I saw stopping power and juggernaut in there. So if there's no stopping power and no juggernaut, I personally think that's a plus because those two perks, people are just constantly abusing them, stopping power and juggernaut. Just take both perks out of the game and then people are going to start using different perks. So I really hope that those two perks are not in the game. Um, uh, also, they talked about... Um, what was it? Uh, I forgot the term. They talked about this feature that you could support your team with that um they call i think they said like a trophy system they were talking about these features that like players could activate and they could support their team with it and they were talking about a bigger emphasis on squad play but uh i wonder how that's gonna work because you know i like called i like the old modern warfare games i like modern Warfare one and two but the thing is though is that a lot of times in these games, unfortunately, people don't work together, they don't like to play objective, um, they just go for kills, they don't like to cooperate, because I remember in one in one instance, the guy said, uh, you could have two guys, like, breaching a door, and then you could have a sniper there waiting, and then the, he could just oh, shoot the guy that comes out of the door, but the thing is, though, even though you could do that in the game, the likelihood of that happening is just so little, because there's very little chance that you're gonna have that many people working together, because everybody just wants to do their own thing, and it's running around. There's been so many games where I try to tell people, like, can you please support me on this objective, help me out here, but they're just somewhere at the edge of the map, just sitting there just for kills, they're trying to build up their kill streaks, not really supporting the team, so I wonder what they're going to do to try to stop that, try to encourage some team gameplay here. I actually saw an IGN video or, uh, a few days ago where they said, oh, playing the objective isn't important, it's just all about kills, I'm like, I'm like, really? Really, you're just going to tell people, you're going to tell people to ignore the objective, they're going to lose every match then, but, um, uh, that was it, and uh, the vehicles are the biggest change there, and also w the customization, right, the customization. Um, the maps, big, very big change, very big maps, vehicles, the customization. Now, the guns in this game, they have, um, they, I think the guy said that most rifles in this game and submachine guns, they have like 60 different attachments, and he said even pistols have like 30 different attachments, but I think he's counting a lot of the different sights as like attachments as well, so there's all different stocks, there's different like barrels, different suppressors, uh, different scopes, different magazines, all this type of stuff, different grips, all this different stuff to customize your gun, so I don't think, I don't think you're gonna see two players with the exact same gun, just the amount of customization in this game, I don't think you're gonna see a game with two players, the exact same gun. Also, I just remembered, there is 20 versus 20 maps. So, 40 players. 40 player maps 
on this game, which I think if they have the large scale maps, I think that's going to be kind of cool. Um, they have crossplay, so they're going to be able to play with Xbox and PC, PS4, all going to be able to play together. They didn't really mention how that's going to work, but that's going to be a thing in the game. And um, I'm excited for this game. I'm looking forward to it. I'm really looking forward to the story um, in this game. I want to see what the story is going to be like. I was looking at the characters in the thing, and it was like the Coalition versus the Allegiance. I'm assuming the Coalition are the good guys, and the Allegiance are the bad guys. In the um, in the in They're based on the campaign factions. But uh, what I noticed is... I, I noticed that you play, like, as, as a certain character. It's It was a little weird. You pick, like, an operator. You pick a certain character. I'm not really against that. I'm open to the new thing there. But it was, like, where you picked, like, a certain character on each side. And you played as that character. Um, So I guess that's that. I'm excited. I'm looking forward to this game. Let me know what you guys think. And final thing that I wanted to cover is... um. I was paying attention to the chat a lot when I was, like, watching this reveal. And I was watching this, like, um, this uh, live event. And when I was watching that, I saw so many comments of just people just unhappy, angry at the game. They were saying, oh, Call of Duty is dead. Call of Duty is too much like Battlefield. Call of Duty is too much like Rainbow Six Siege. First of all, Rainbow Six Siege and Battlefield are like the opposites of one another. Where Rainbow Six Siege is like really close close quarter, breach and clear gameplay, where Battlefield, you have, like, really big, big maps, squad-based gameplay with all these vehicles, air and land uh, vehicles. So, I don't know how somebody could say, oh, this game is like Rainbow Six Siege, this game is like Battlefield. These people have not played Battlefield and Rainbow Six Siege games. They're just saying that because they don't like the direction the game is going, they don't like the change, and... Quite frankly, these a lot of these people they've played the same game over and over again. They've played um, uh, they've played the futuristic Call of Duties. They started on those. They're not used to the modern setting. They they feel they feel threatened basically. They feel angry that you can't run on walls, that you can't jump around jetpacks, all this other stuff. They don't like the slower paced gameplay. And the gameplay in this is much more fast paced than Rainbow Six Siege. It's much more fast paced than Battlefield also. So there's no way that you can compare it. The only way I could see somebody possibly compare it the battlefield is with the tank but even that that doesn't make sense because vehicles are not kill streaks in battlefield you can only get that with seven kills and the vehicles play a much larger role like vehicles turn matches around in battlefield but in this game you just have that tank so anybody that's saying this is like battlefield this is like rainbow six siege they don't really have any a, any idea what they're talking about they just don't like a, the change they don't like that something's new and when i saw the futuristic stuff they started that with Advanced Warfare. They did something completely different with the running on the walls, the jetpacks, the jumping, all that other future stuff. They did something completely different. I think it was, yeah, it was Call of Duty Ghosts, Call of Duty Ghosts, and then it was Advanced Warfare. And Advanced Warfare from Call of Duty Ghosts, that was such a different change in gameplay. It was such a different change in gameplay. And these people, they were all so excited for it. Oh, this is so cool. I'm going to love this. All this running on the walls, jumping. But now... You go back to a modern setting, the game looks great, and they're like, oh wait, now the game's too different, Call of Duty is not like it's No, no, no. Call of Duty has changed. Call of Duty went from the modern setting to the futuristic stuff, now it's going back to the modern setting. And you know, the next game after this, it might be a futuristic game again, so these people are just not used to change, I'm open to change, Call of Duty needs some change, because in my opinion, it's the same game every year. Every year it's the same game, so I'm happy they're doing something. Let me know what you guys think down below. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like. If you're new to my channel, join my con, subscribe. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, everyone.